Hello and welcome back to the Eyes of O Gaming channel. Thank you for joining me as we look at yet another game in the What Is It and Is It Worth It game review series. As always, we will be looking at the game in as story spoiler free way as possible, and I'll do my best to present the game objectively. What do I mean by objectively? Well, simply put, video games, as with nearly any form of art or entertainment, is a subjective and personal experience. It's basically impossible to numerically measure any part of the game, and so assigning a number value as a rating is completely arbitrary and, well, pointless. Because of that, we aren't going to do that in this video. Instead, I'll try to present what the game is and the experience you can expect, so you can make your own conclusion on if it's worth it for you. At the end of the video, I will give my own opinion if I enjoyed it, and if I would recommend it, or at least which gamers I think might enjoy the title. Sometimes you want to give yourself a nightmare from the terror of a great horror game experience. And sometimes you just want a little nightmare. So today, we're looking at the game Little Nightmares. This one released originally in 2017, being developed by Tarsier? Maybe Tarsier Studios? And published by Bandai Namco Entertainment. So what is Little Nightmares, and how has this one held up over time? Well, as usual, we're going to look at this one in as spoiler-free way as possible to determine just that, with the goal of answering the most important question asked in this review series. Is this one worth it for you? Sit back, relax, let's find out together. In Little Nightmares, you play as Six, who's a nine-year-old girl in a yellow raincoat. I haven't seen an official explanation of her name, but the common explanation that I have seen online is that she's the sixth child to be taken to the Maw. If you haven't played the game yet, you probably don't know what the Maw is, but don't worry, you'll find out. You start the game by awaking from a dream, and then work to escape various zones, typically by sneaking past enemies and solving puzzles. Though this is the general format that the game is going to follow through the entire way, there are some unique challenges thrown in as you progress through. This one is a platformer, and takes place in what I've heard described as a two and a half dimensional world. This is kind of a weird way to term it, but essentially instead of a standard classic 2D game taking place on a two dimensional plane, the player is able to have some restricted movement in a third dimension. Because of this restricted movement, it's not considered a true 3D game, but it also isn't a true 2D game, giving it the term of a 2.5D game. Controls are fairly basic with just movement, sprinting, and a crouch or a slide option, as well as having some limited camera control functionality. There's also the use of a lighter and the ability to grab things, pick up objects and throw them, and that's about it. There aren't any combat controls in a classic sense, though you will be required to defend yourself in some instances. Most of the time you'll be navigating level zones, attempting to stay hidden and manipulating objects in the environment in order to solve puzzles and continue on to the next zone. As for the puzzles themselves, I would rate them as easy to moderate. Personally, I didn't find any of them to be too challenging, and the game does a good job of slowly introducing you to ideas or concepts for solving puzzles, which are then increased in complexity at a rather organic rate to allow for the player to solve them with minimal frustration. That's not to say that the puzzles are boring at all, as they typically are constructed in unique ways and can be quite satisfying to complete even for some of the more simple ones. The graphics were surprisingly quite good for a platformer. The style is unique, and the dark humor aesthetic holds through the entire game. There isn't a huge variety of game environments, and each zone will feel very similar for the most part. However, they are all constructed quite well, and will seem to tell the story of each zone through the use of environment, layout, and object placement.
As for the unique features to set this one apart, while it is considered a horror game, though I wouldn't say it feels particularly horrifying in a classic sense of a horror game. Don't expect the cliché typical horror game elements such as jump scares or grotesque imagery. Instead, this one goes for dark and disturbing vibes. The horror is more about the situation that you find yourself in as the protagonist, mixed with the suspense which is present in some levels giving you some tension when attempting to hide or pass through a puzzle quickly to avoid detection or capture. There is a lot of Japanese style imagery and locations, however, again this is done in a disturbing or dark way, and so not a true to life representation, but is designed to be more fitting in this horror style of aesthetic. In terms of the genre, it's a puzzle platformer at heart, with a dark and disturbing horror-esque ambiance, with a focus on solving puzzles and avoiding enemies rather than a combat-focused horror game. Sound is quite unique in this one in that there's no dialogue through the entire game. The story is presented through the gameplay rather than a narration or dialogue with NPCs, as is typical with most other games. The noises that you experience in the game will mostly be environmental noises, or interacting with objects, as well as some noises from hostile characters. There is some subtle ambient sound as well, though it is fairly low level, and most of the time it does not distract from the experience. Overall, I personally enjoyed the way sound is implemented in this one, but I'll present some examples here for you so you can decide on your own. Okay, so let's try and compare this one to some similar games. I haven't played a ton of modern platformers, so my comparisons might be a little bit limited. For games that have been covered on the channel already, I would say you could draw some slight comparison to Outlast, simply due to the need to hide from enemies rather than engaging them in combat as in most games. Also, the tense and dramatic feeling that can be induced when trying to escape from a hostile individual can be a little bit similar. I would say that the experience in Little Nightmares does differ as the presentation is quite different from being a platformer instead of the 3D style, and so the experience may feel a little less intense in practical terms and concentrated more on an atmospheric one. Another game covered on the channel to bring some comparison is Plague Tale. I mention this one simply as it is a horror game which is a little less horror and more disturbing and dark, with solving puzzles at its core. The big difference again will be the presentation as a platformer in Little Nightmares. However, I also found the puzzles to be more clever in Little Nightmares as well. The disturbing atmosphere and aesthetic is also different as with Plague Tale we have more of a realism infused with fantasy approach. Whereas Little Nightmares is reality which has been exaggerated and distorted to a disturbing level. Seemingly mundane activities such as eating is looked at in an exaggerated and grotesque way, 
with really disturbing results. A game I have played which I felt was the most comparable to this one was Inside. This is another platformer puzzle game with dark and disturbing tones throughout, and this one felt very similar. The art styles are unique from each other, and the overall stories are quite different, but much of the feel of the game and many concepts will feel quite similar between these two titles. So now that we've looked at some of the features of the game, we reach the point of my review where I give a more subjective look at my personal experience with it. Please keep in mind that the following is just my opinion of the game, and if the features and genre seem interesting to you, you should definitely check it out for yourself, as not all games are for all gamers. The game that you hate might be the next gamer's all-time favorite, which is one of the things that I love about gaming. There's always something for someone out there. So did I enjoy this game, and do I recommend picking it up? Hmm. I like it. I was really surprised by this game, but yes, I definitely recommend it. As I said, I haven't really played too many modern platformers, and I wasn't really sure what to expect with this one going in. It was really a pleasure to play through this one, and I really appreciated that this title provided what felt like a really unique experience from other games. The art style and aesthetics were done really well and I really enjoyed the disturbing filter through which the world is presented. The storyline was interesting and I was genuinely surprised and intrigued as to what would come next. The puzzles can be moderately challenging, but really there was nothing here that felt too difficult or needed to be looked up in order to solve. The difficulty actually seemed to ramp up at a very fair pace, and gives the player the chance to learn and get better at the systems in place along the way. The only real critique might be the length of the game, as it is rather short and only takes a handful of hours to complete. Personally, I didn't mind this, and I felt that the length was adequate for what the game is. However, it is something that I would like to make you aware of if this is an important aspect to you. I would recommend this game for anyone who enjoys platformers, or specifically puzzle platformers, or those who enjoy a unique gaming experience or are looking for a more casual game that incorporates a dark and disturbing tone and aesthetic throughout. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Little Nightmares. Have you already played through this one? What were your own thoughts on the game? Did you agree or disagree with my own assessment of it? If you disagreed, let me know why. Maybe there's something I didn't think of and you can convince me. I'd love to hear about your own experiences down in the comments, or if my review showcase was helpful, I'd like to know if you decided to go ahead with it or not. Either way, if you found this video interesting or entertaining, please let me know with a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. I make and upload a variety of gaming content, not just reviews like this, but also walkthroughs, mod showcases, let's play and more, and I'd love to have you join the community and help direct the future of the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch today, and until next time, take care.